Uh, if you uh, appreciate engaged libraries, you're in for a treat. J Jamar Raming from the Wilmington Institute Free Library in Wilmington, Delaware, took, well, if I told you everything, it'd be a, there'd be a, I'd have to give a spoiler alert. But he took a series of outside the box concepts. They were arduous and he made it look easy. In addition to that, he took a mix of practical considerations and aesthetic considerations and made them sing together. And lastly, he took a moribund tomb of a library and made it vibrant again. So I think basically you're going to appreciate everything he has to say. So let me hand it over to Jamar. Jamar Raming, everybody. Thanks. Well, hi, everybody. I'm delighted to, to be here. Um, I, I'm, I serve as the director of the Wilmington Institute Public Library, and we're in Wilmington, Delaware. And like most urban libraries, we have the same problems that, we, well, we had the same problems that, that, that were common to urban libraries, you know, an acute homeless, homelessness issue. Um, we serve 70,000 people, and we have a community that's relatively segregated. We range from a, um, a working a working class black community to, you know, to a, a, an affluent white community. So we, our city is, is relatively segregated. Um, when we were doing asset mapping and figuring out the needs of our constituents, we were surprised that a high volume of our constituents had never even left the city limits of Wilmington. They had never even traveled to Philadelphia and Philadelphia is 35 miles away. So we decided that it was our responsibility um, to serve as an innovative and inviting link to the world. We just decided that since our people could not leave Wilmington, that we were gonna bring the world to them. And so I'm just gonna talk about how we transformed our urban library to the to the social and recreational and intellectual epicenter of the city of Wilmington. Here in library land, you know, the, the narrative has been EDI and social justice. And we just decided that we were not, that we were not gonna take a strategic approach to accomplish those things. We were just gonna, we were just gonna do good work. We were gonna offer good services to our community. You think about it, if you, if you own a pizza parlor and the pizza's good, you're going to have black people come in and eat it. You're going to have white people come in and eat it. You're going to have LGBTQ people come and eat it. And so we just decided that we were not going to, we were just going to, we were just going to offer a good product. We we're going to have a good brand and that the EDI component would accomplish itself. So the first thing that we started doing, we started, we, we decided that we were going to engage people with pop culture. So the first big name that we invited to our library was LeVar Burton. And so at LeVar Burton, you know, you, you have roots. So you, you, you know, so, so our African-American community was excited about him. Uh, with Star Trek, we had our sci-fi um, nerds were, were, were excited. Then you have Reading Rainbow. So we accomplished the literacy aspect. And so one thing that we did by, one thing that we're finding is that when you engage the arts, the humanities and pop culture in a robust manner, you accomplish social cohesion. Because what we did is that with all of these, with LeVar Burton um, representing all of these diverse themes, we brought in a diverse group, we had a diverse audience. This was one place where in the city of Wilmington, all zip codes were together. You had black people and white people, poor, rich, black, white, Hispanic, all in the same space enjoying LeVar Burton. So, so what we have done is that through engaging pop culture and having a good brand and a good product, we have achieved, we've built a bridge in our community. We've accomplished social cohesion, which is something that we're all struggling with at the national level. These are some of the big names that we've had in our library. We've had Anna Navarro from The View. We've had Sonny Hostin from The View. We've had Pam Greer, Dennis Rodman, Lynn Whitfield. Um, we've had Jason Reynolds. Uh, and an exciting tidbit about Anna Navarro is that one of our customers, you know, um, we, we did an Anna Navarro talk and one of our customers gave Anna Navarro a piece of jewelry and she featured it on The View and Whoopi Goldberg bought some of the, the jewelry and this woman's online uh, sales just hit hit the roof. And so, so like I say, what, 
you, you know, by, by having star power in our libraries, we've enhanced the economic vitality for our, for our community. This woman made money by <laughs> attending a library program. One thing that we've also done is that we have uh, we've brought well acclaimed artists artists to our libraries, and so we you know art is utilitarian. Most people do not do art for the sake of art, but they do art to help us tap into the interior of one's experience. And so we did a we did a social justice art exhibition in our library, and so we've got 30 beautiful paintings in our in our library commons by the acclaimed Ted Ellis. And if you go to this exhibit. You're engaging the African American experience from slavery to the to the to the contemporary. So we've used art to tell a story. We've used art to spread the social justice narrative um, and story as well. One thing that we've done, we've brought in sports icons. And so one thing that you'll find is that when you attend a public library association conference, you're not going to have diverse worldviews. You know. Public Library Association, when they bring in speakers, they bring in people that we typically agree with. They bring in the same, the same kind of liberal, hyper-liberal mindsets. But one thing that we've done in Wilmington is that we have, we've created opportunities for our citizens to engage a variety of worldviews. Wilmington is a, is a, is a, is a Democrat, you know, blue state. But if you look at Herschel Walker, Herschel Walker is an ultra conservative. He's a Trump supporter. And we invited him there and people attended and people challenged him. They spoke to him and some people, you know, their minds changed. Their, their minds changed after about him after talking to him. They, 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 they went from not hating him to maybe disagreeing with him. And so we have used the arts and the humanities and pop culture to create opportunities for our citizens to um, engage diverse viewpoints and to have um, to have different worldviews. Um, Dennis Dennis Rodman. Uh, many people think that he's a you know a, a North Korean communist sympathizer. And after they came to the program and they heard his story, they found out that he's actually a peacemaker. Uh, many people were upset that you know, you know we had few people challenge the program. It turned into an intellectual freedom issue, but. We invited the people, we said, we said, come to the program. We'll, I even arranged an opportunity for some of these people to meet Dennis Rodman privately and ask him questions. And after they got a chance to talk to him, their minds changed because they had, they had some context to his story. You know, the average person is educated by social media mimes or YouTube clips, and they have no, they have no context. But as a public library, when we invite these prominent speakers here and we let them talk for an hour and we give people an opportunity to to communicate with them and dialogue with them. I mean, we, when we open up platforms for dialogue, then we, then, then, then context is offered. And when you have context offered, minds change, and people don't go from, they go from, they, they can go from, they can transition from hatred to, to disagreeing. It's, a, it, it's okay to disagree. We want people to, to disagree. Um, and so, like I say in this forum, Public Library Association, I mean, I challenge, the Public Library Association to, to invite somebody like Tucker Carlson or Sean Hannity to be the keynote speaker. I mean, you may have people <laughs> picket or, or, or boycott the conference, but we can't be we can't be a homogen. If we're librarians, we can't be a homogenous group of people. We have to we have to we can't always be around people that agree with us. We have to engage different worldviews. We have to um, expand our, our mindset. So we used sports, and then we had. Uh, Benjamin Watson, he's a he's an ardent um, pro pro life activist, though he's a football player, and he spoke at the Republican National Convention. And so many of our um, ultra blue constituents weren't pleased with his political persuasions, but they appreciated him as an athlete. So they they came out and they heard him speak. And again, we've had the same re results. People people got a chance to talk to him and hear what he had to say, and there was context added to the social media mimes and the social media clips, and they walked away not, not hating him, but again, disagreeing with him, which again, that's what we want. We want, we want a, soci a well-informed society where people disagree with one another, but they respect one another. But what social media has done and lack of, lack of context is it's polarized our society and people Hate, they, they hate people that they really shouldn't hate because 
They hate people who, who, who see the world differently than they do. So we've used sports um, as, a, as a way to expand, um, to, to, give our, to give our citizens opportunities to be exposed to different worldviews. Lastly, we've, 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 we've used music as well. We've had Kenny Latimer, we've had Rakim, we've had Take Six. We've had, um, oh my, we've had uh, Kweli Talib, we've had him there. So we've had, we've had tons of rappers at our, um, at our library and again, Music is something that everybody agrees on. You know, if you go back to the civil rights movement, you had white people sicking dogs on black people, but then again, you had white and black people at Motown, at Motown venues dancing to Diana Ross and the Supremes. And so music is something that we, we agree on. And so as a public library, we've tried to offer things where there's agreement. And so again, these, these events, these were, these were, these were these are the these are the only events in the city where you you'd walk in and you'd see people of all races, uh, people of all zip codes, of all nationalities, and so we've used music, we've used things that people agree on to um, to achieve social cohesion uh, in our in our city. And lastly, I mean, we we since we have since since our approach has been engaging the humanities. And arts um, in a robust manner. We've we've decided to, to to use our space to give back to the community. We've had barbers come in and offer free haircuts. We've given away free diapers, free books. We've had school supply drives. So we have also had opportunities where people where, where people's needs you know are being met. So thank you for hearing what I had to say. Um, and I hope that uh, that you're encouraged and inspired by what the Wilmington Library has accomplished by engaging the arts and the humanities and pop culture in such a way that has built bridges, that has achieved social cohesion, and has made a library that, that, is, a, that is a vibrant uh, social community hub. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jamar. That was fabulous and really inspiring and fascinating to hear the great things happening at your library. I love your use of that word, social cohesion. We sure could use more of that today. I'm gonna just highlight, take a few minutes to highlight some free Web Junction resources we have that um, are related to Jamar's um, words today, and I hope you'll check them out, really um, help you dig into EDI work a little bit more. And at the end, then we'll talk, take time for questions. We have, um, let's talk about race toolkits from a webinar um, last month from staff at uh, Salt Lake City Public Library. These talk about how to use picture books to talk about race with kids. We have several webinars I wanna highlight. One's called Promoting Community Engagement and Challenge Prejudice with a Human Library. Human Library is a really interesting concept where you take human books. These are students, faculty, staff who volunteer from their community to be um, to share their life experiences and answer questions that address stereotypes and prejudices and taboo topics. There's another one called Strengthening EDI Practice Through Self-Paced Learning. Uh, this is from Multnomah County Public Library staff. Um, they have, they're discussing their racially just toolkit. Lots of activities for staff to use to learn and practice on their own with their colleagues. And finally, one called Doing the Work Internally and Externally. You can hear how Richland Library from South Carolina moved the needle on the honest dialogue, empathy, and equity with their staff and community. You can find these on oclc.oc.lc slash PLA22, and you look for this session, and all these uh, free Web Junction resources are listed there. So please dig into those, and let's turn to some questions. Any questions from the audience? I have one for you. Um, I can imagine some of these big name speakers could have been really expensive. Can you talk about the sort of financial side of this? Well, you know what, like I say, when I first came there, I mean, you have to be very, very bold. I just picked up the phone and, and made some phone calls and said, you, you must come to Wilmington. You, you have to come to Wilmington. It's the best city in the United States of America. And they, and they come, but anyway, we have, a, we have an active library board that's helped fundraise. And so we had some foundation money that we had, that, that was the startup for the speaker series. But what happened is, is that as, as, um, as we had these big names coming and, and, and the attention that it brought to the city, uh, we, it, it, it increased advocacy for libraries. We have more library advocates. And so consequently, the Delaware Humanities, um, the Delaware Education Foundation, 
they they call us up and say, well, hey, you know, we'd like to be a part of part of your doing. So we'll we'll pay for half of your speaker series if you you know put our logo on your flyer and acknowledge us. And so we we have developed strategic partnerships um, as a result, and that's helped that's helped us fund the the speaker series. And we've also we're pretty bold. Most most library systems they want to be community hubs and community community centers, but they only devote less than five percent of their annual operating budget to programming and marketing and so we decided that if we are going to be a vibrant community center that we have to put our money where our mouth is so we we've devoted close to 20 percent of our annual budget to to programming and marketing because you have to invest where you want the outcome to take place so i think that's great advice to be bold and I think it really builds on each other, like you said, you know, sure you're creating that momentum. What a great way to create, create advocacy, because what happens is, is that when you have these big events and your local politicians go to your library and they, you invite them and they come see Dennis Rodman, when it's time for them to, to vote on library legislation or funding, they have, a, they have a great fond memory cemented in their head, a good experience to draw upon when they're making these critical decisions that, that will impact your future sustainability. I have another question for you about assessment. How are you? How do you measure an outcomes of events like this? It's it's tricky, and I'm curious your thoughts well, on that. Well, you know, we, we do we do community surveys, and of one survey when we did our virtual uh, series during the pandemic, um, we had celebrities come on virtually. Um, one woman had filled out the survey and said that that our library programs, you know, gave her something to look forward to, and it helped her cope with depression. Um, also. You know, we, we have noticed that there has been a dialectical relationship between these type of program offerings and increased usage in, uh, in, in, in general library usage. And so pre-pandemic, um, after we started offering these large names coming in, our, our annual um, door count increased 25%. So we, we have some quantitative and, and uh, qualitative um, data and metrics that we've you know that, that we've used you know so that's great any other questions well thank you so much i really like your challenge to be bold and your inspiration to be bold so thank you for helping us to build bridges